Hello students, in this video we'll discuss discrete Markov chains, stopping times, and the strong Markov property. Let's be given a discrete Markov chain x0, x1, xn, and so on. And then we say that t A this is a random variable. The, the output integer, the non-negative integers, is a stopping time. If the event t equals n, that event can be determined just by information from these x is contained, is a subset of the information is in the information generated by x0 up to xn, okay? And that's just the information from all events depending on x0 up to xn, all pre-images of those, uh, those events over there. So that's what the stopping time is. So for example, one stopping time we're really gonna be interested in is this stopping time over here. I'm gonna say ti, which is the infimum, or the smallest or the minimum, the smallest n greater than or equal to 1, such that xn is equal to i. The process enters the ith state at that time, the smallest time for which the process enters that state. So this is a stopping time, is the classic example of a stopping time. But Markov, and we're going to study this stopping time sort of in depth in terms of return times to a given state for a Markov chain. What we want to do now is we want to prove the strong Markov property of the Markov chain, right? And so what does that say? So let t be a stopping time our goal is to prove the probability that x t plus 1 is equal to j given that x t for stopping time is equal to i is really for a time homogeneous Markov chain, I like to show this is just P going from I to J. In other words, it doesn't matter, even though it's a that's a random variable, now it's a random time that I'm doing these things at. That's the strong Markov property. In other words, this at this time, this, this, mark, this time actually acts as the same as the temporal time we're used to dealing with. Like that's a strong Markov property because these are random variables, now so these are random times in the, in the process. Okay? All right, so how do we prove something like this? So proof, what we're gonna do is the following. Proof. Of course, this is, of course, given, of course, that t is equal to some fixed value n, right? So here's the proof of this fact. So let's compute the probability that x t plus 1 is equal to j and x t is equal to i and t is equal to a value n. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this as the sum of what? The sum over all, um, I'm going to make some index set up over here. I'm going to make some set omega n, omega n. I'll play with this omega n in a second. Sum over omega n of the probability that x t plus 1 is equal to j, given that these two things happen, given that x t is equal to j and t is equal to n, times these things are being multiplied by the probability that um, x, um, the xn is equal to little xn, x0 is equal to little x, x0 is equal to little x0. And these, of course, these, these values, these come from, a, this, these points over here come from this sigma omega n. And so what is omega n over here? So omega n is therefore what? is all of these vectors over here, x0 up through xn, such that if this condition is true, that this would imply that t is equal to n, and xn and xn, or xt in this case, is equal to i. So that's the set we're summing over over here. We're summing over all of those pro possible probabilities such that that is true. And so, of course, once this condition over here is met, if you're in such, if you're, if that, if that vector x0 through xn 
is in omega, then that's going to force what? That forces t to be equal to that should be an, that should be a, not a j, but that should be an i. That's going to force t to be that's going to force t to be n and x n to be i. Okay, excellent. So that we're implicitly summing over this thing. Now what can I do? Now if t is equal to n, this becomes what? This if t is equal to n, this becomes x n, and this becomes x n plus one. So what's going to happen over here is that this sum is going to re revert to the sum over all these vectors on this omega n set. of the probability that x n plus 1 is equal to j, given that x n is equal to i, times these probabilities over here. Probability x n is equal to x n, all the way down to x 0 is equal to x 0. Okay. Now this, of course, is just our ordinary transition probability. This is just p i j. So this becomes p i j times the prob times the sum over here, the sum over omega n. I'm going to suppress the notation of all these values over here. p x n equals little x n, all the way down to x zero equals little x zero. But that's exactly equal to what? That's exactly equal to this thing over here is exactly equal to p i j times what? Times the probability that x times the probability that x t is equal to i and t is equal to n. So now what do I have over here? So now I can say that if I look at this probability divided by this probability, that has to be equal to pij. But what is this intersection, intersection, intersection probability? That's exactly equal to this step over here. So in other words, if I go from a stopping time, if I was to have my process at a stopping time t at i, going to j at the next point in, the stop, at the next point in time, is actually the ordinary transition probability, and this is called the strong Markov property of a discrete Markov chain. Thank you very much.